Hello, and welcome to this episode of Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. We're glad to have you with us. Today our organists are all five of the Tabernacle and Temple Square organists, Richard Elliott, Andrew Unsworth, Brian Mathias, Linda Margetts, and Joseph Peoples. And I'm your host, Luke Howard. Alexandra Gilmont was a renowned organ improviser and composer. He was also a music administrator and beloved teacher. Gilmont helped establish the Schola Cantorum in Paris in 1894, and two years later was also asked to serve on the organ faculty at the Paris Conservatoire. He published not only his own works, but several anthologies of earlier organ works by both French and foreign composers, always with an eye toward practicality and educating the organ student. Joseph Peoples will play now the Grand Coeur Triomphal from volume four of Guillemont's L'Organiste Pratique.
the well-known air from J.S. Bach's orchestral suite number three isn't actually an air, at least not literally. That word, when used in a musical context, implies a song or an aria. Now, sometimes composers, including Bach, will use that label for an instrumental work they feel is particularly song-like or that strives toward a vocal line. Bach certainly makes that point clear in this ravishing work that is justly popular, even in its many transcriptions. But today, try focusing not just on the gorgeous melody, but on the inner voices as well, and the harmonies, which are rich and beautifully complex. This is a song for sure, but one in which the accompaniment is at least equally as interesting as the tune. We'll hear now Bach's air from the orchestral suite number three, transcribed for organ by the organist, Andrew Unsworth. Thank you. 
The name of American organist and composer Alfred Fiedak isn't widely known outside the organ community, though he has published hundreds of hymn tunes and organ works and remains very active within the American Guild of Organists. Linda Margots performs next Fiedak's Fantasia on St. Anne, that magnificent stately hymn melody better known as O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. After that, Richard Elliott performs Percy Granger's Irish tune from County Derry. Granger didn't write the tune, of course. It's an old Irish folk melody that was published decades before Granger was even born. But it was Percy Granger's harmonization and arrangement for various instruments and ensembles, including band, piano, and orchestra, that popularized this tune, now known so widely as Danny Boy. First, Fedex Fantasia on St. Anne, then Richard Elliott's organ transcription of Granger's Irish tune from County Derry.
It's a little ironic that Marcel Dupré's Cortège et Litanie was originally composed for the piano, not the organ. He wrote it in 1921, and then the following year arranged it for organ with orchestra as incidental music to a play. It wasn't until 1924 that Dupré finally published a version for solo organ. It's fascinating that arguably the 20th century's most celebrated virtuoso organist should take such a roundabout path toward publishing a work for solo organ. And it's an interesting work too, with a somewhat enigmatic title. In everyday speech, the word cortege usually connotes a funeral procession, although technically it means the people in the procession, not the procession itself. When referring to something not related to a funeral, cortege simply means entourage or retinue or a group of followers. Litany also has both a religious and a lay connotation. In the liturgy, a litany is a prayer or chant consisting of a series of repeated invocations. But we also use the word litany to describe any set or series of statements on one theme or motif. The original Greek root implies a supplication, so the aim of reciting any litany is the hope that something will change, whether that litany is addressed to God or merely some other authority figure. Dupré's cortege is certainly stately, though not explicitly funereal. When the litany begins, it's more modal and chromatic, but still nominally in the same E major key of the cortege. And then the cortege returns and combines with the litany into a grand, majestic, even triumphant conclusion that, again, hits different. No funeral connotations or feelings of grief or loss. No petitions for eternal peace for the departed. So, is this a sacred composition or is it secular? If you've been watching Piping Up regularly, you'll know that sometimes that's not the most useful question to ask about a musical composition. It can be both. We, likewise, should seek to infuse our everyday lives with the sacred at every opportunity. Our normal actions should reflect the divine within us, so that this contrivance of a distinction between sacred and secular becomes permeable, if not entirely moot in both music and life. Brian Mathias closes today's program now with Marcel Dupré's possibly secular or possibly sacred Cortège et Litanie.
We're so glad you joined us for this episode of Piping Up, featuring all five Tabernacle and Temple Square organists, Richard Elliott, Andrew Unsworth, Brian Mathias, Linda Margots, and Joseph Peoples. Thank you for watching. You are always welcome to return for the weekly live stream of Piping Up, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. This show streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.